Okay, so uh, <coughs> today I would like to speak on something considering the Zegel Pietetsky Shapiro or Pietetsky Shapiro, as you wish, Pietetsky Shapiro sequence. Pietetsky Shapiro sequence are sequences of the shape n to the c, integral part of n to the c, when c beta is, it can be between 1 and uh, one in infinity. It's less interesting if it is between zero and one, but you may consider it in some cases. There is no, and uh, of course not an integer. Otherwise, <coughs> there is no not much fun with that. So this is this kind of things, and uh, what I'm what I would like to to look at is some question about coprimality uh, of uh, such elements. Um, I this is something quite recent. I, uh, I have done with uh, Michael Dormota and Clemens Mulner from Vienna. And uh, there are a lot of questions which are still open and very possibly there are many things that can be done on, uh, on that. So this is why uh, I think it is something interesting. OK, just to give you maybe uh, I know you helped me in counting when I start by saying uh, section one. Then you will say for the next section, it is section two. So good, which I don't always remember. Uh, just some, some history of question like that. Uh, maybe the, 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 first, uh, the first thing that, that was done is something by Lambeck and Mother. So some history. Uh, Lambeck and Mother. I noticed that I should give more information of that kind. It will be done on the notes that are being prepared, but um, I should give them here too. So this was in, uh, in 1955, so it's not a, a recent problem. Well, by the way, this, uh, they are called like that because Zegal used those number and look, they, are, they behave more or less like powers. And so uh, Zegal in the 1920s, about one century ago, looked at the additive properties and put something like Waring's problem for them. And uh, some very important things has been done by Piatesky Shapiro, which was to prove that when C is a bit larger than 1, then you have infinitely many primes, and you have even a prime number theorem in this sequence. So it was really the first sequence which was growing quite easy, like a polynomial in some way, polynomial growth, in which you had infinitely many primes and even a prime number theorem. Uh, so, Lambeck and Moser uh, studied the following thing. They studied, I'm not going to, to quote everything in details, but they, they looked at the numbers n, they count the number of n, so let us say, they count the number of n up to x, for which uh, you have n and uh, some f of n are co-prime, oh, f of n, uh, the GCD is 1, for some f which were something like n to the c, but for a c less than 1. So essentially, they were looking at slowly increasing functions, and they could compute what was that, and essentially say that it is, those are more or less independent. You see, if you take two numbers, random numbers, uh, integers, uh, the, the probability they are co-prime is 1 over zeta of 2. I think this is quite... Uh, basic result in number theory. Uh, and so they, they showed that this number is something which is equivalent to uh, zeta of 2 times x, or uh, 1 over zeta of 2 times x. Okay, And uh, the thing stayed like that for a for rather long time until uh, Francine Delmer, by the way, happy birthday, Francine, and, uh, and I. This, this was much later. It was about 2000. When was that? I don't remember. Did I write it? 2002. Uh, we looked at that, and we showed the, the same thing for n integral part of n to the c is equal to 1, blah, 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 and then for all c. For any c, then they are co-prime. And uh, possibly the next thing, there, there was, there was, I am not quoting everything, but Bergelson and uh, Richter, in uh, 2016, 
looked at the following, which was quite interesting. They were looking blah, blah, blah. And it was n. And then it was f1 of n, blah, 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 f uh, k of n is equal to 1. So of course, then it is no longer zeta of 2. It is something like a zeta of k or k, k plus 1. 1 over zeta of k plus 1 uh, you have. And uh, where fn were, you can think that there were different uh, Piatesky Shapiro sequences, and they extended that, which is nice because you see, once you have done something for n to the c, then someone will say, haha, but can you do it for n to the c times log n, and can you do it for log n alpha, and n log n uh, log log n, and so on, and exponential to minus something. And uh, so what they did, what's very nice, is to consider this function from something which is a Hardy field. Hardy fields were introduced by Hardy. I, I, uh, I'm not going to, 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 to the details here. But Hardy fields are, were introduced by Hardy in some way to give scales of comparison of the, of the increasing of the function. You see, this is something you have for the, in the error term, in the prime number theorem, you have some function which are exponential of minus square root of log x, and then you do minus log s to power 3 over 5, and so on, and so on, and you have things of the kind. So they take something which is in a Hardy field, and they tell the integral part of them. And uh, what they ask is that they are, uh, of course, that can be very slow. So you want them to have an increasing growth. So they are polynomial growth, and they are quite apart one from the other. Okay, and uh, more recently, you can see it on the uh, archi archive. I, am not, I don't think it is yet published. Uh, by a Banks and Sparlinski. So this is 2022, and I don't know when it will be published. Um, looked at something which is when you have linear functions, alpha 1 of n, blah, 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 alpha n, alpha k of n is equal to 1. And again, you have something. Those should be rational, and uh, if they are rational, then you have competition between those. So they have to be rational. And, uh, and you can say, again, something uh, of this kind. So what I want to stress is that in all those kind of results, there is something each time that there is the value n. Okay? And there is one good reason for that is that you are going, if you want to see what is the GCD, you are going to look at the common divisors of them. And so there should be a divisor of one of them. And it is very nice to say that you have a divisor of n. Because if n is divisible by d, just to say that n is equal to md, and you are just summing over md for m consecutive integers. So this makes your life quite easy. And so what I would like to, to look at today is something in which there is no n. We have the element co prime. Uh, but then. We are not going to count the number of elements. We're just going to say that there exist n for which those elements are co-prime. OK? So maybe I go now to the statement of result. So statement of result, where are they? Here. First of all, why I call that statement of result, I should have put conjecture first. <laughs> OK. Conjecture, uh, you let C uh, in be in uh, what you expect, 1 infinity minus n, and h be a positive integer. Then there exist infinitely many n. Such that um, if C are if the C's are different, usually this is easier. So we want to take consecutive elements. And by the way, taking consecutive elements is fine because this is local property of the of arithmetic functions, so it is 
well into the frame of, uh, of those lectures. n plus 1 to the c, n plus h to the c are pairwise co-prime. Co okay. And you may even gain some numerical conjecture if you say, OK, uh, what you expect indeed is that they are independent. And then when you take independent element, what should it be? But uh, there are, I prefer not to risk too much on that difficulty. And so I go to the, to the statement of the, of the results we have. left alone. So okay, first result uh, so okay, that the conjecture essentially is true for C between 1 and 2. And this we are going to prove because it can be proved by just bare hands. So conjecture is true for C in 1, 2 and even h in terms of n can be taken large as n tends to infinity you may have something which is a bit more than just to say h is fixed and then you can take n tends to infinity then of course it means that there exists a function h tending to infinity such that blah 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 but you can really find one of them and h as large I know that this doesn't mean much because n is involved in the conjecture and the statement of the conjecture and is is at large as some constant you don't care much about the constant it is something which is in any case positive when c is in between 1 and 2 log n so you can go up to log n okay and from the construction you'll see that uh, you cannot do uh, much better the second result in some ways to say, oh, oh, how can you do in such a way that none of those elements are co-prime? Okay? So this is one way to, to see that will be indeed easy. Just if all of them are even, then you are done. Okay? So for any C, then this, find, this is fine for any C in 1 infinity minus n. There exists. There exists some constant, little constant k, kappa, depends on c, exists kappa, and infinitely many n. Many integer n such that all the elements in the sequence n plus 1 to the c, blah, 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 n plus h to the c, are all even that are all even and h can go very far it is some power of n so we can find really very long consecutive elements in this sequence which are all even okay it's something like a small power of course it is a small power small power of n but at least some power of it. Okay, so this you can do. Okay, so what we what we are going to, to do now, I would like to do the following. This I will explain you later on, possibly in the fourth in the fifth uh, lecture, how you can prove that. And what I am going to prove here, because it is in some way a good point to start before doing this one, I am going to prove theorem two for C in one two. And uh, this will be just something like that, some small h. Okay? And this will be in some way a first step towards proving theorem 1. Okay? We prove theorem 2 for c between 1 and 2. Let us say for the time being h is large, is fixed and large, and we'll see where it comes from that we can go up to a constant time log n. 
Okay. So obviously, there, so now really, what is important? We have no idea how to do for c larger than two. Okay, this is completely open. We are working with uh, with Shaoli and Balu about counting elements having this property. Okay. In the conjecture, do you expect this to hold for, the, for density one? No, not for density. Uh, ah, what do you uh, mean? The, the for almost all C, you mean? Uh, no. Yeah. Almost all. No, uh, no, 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 no. Well, what we expect is that uh, it is like uh, random numbers. That is to say that the, the density should be something like 1 over zeta something or, or even, uh, even less. But uh, we, we expect a positive density. Obviously not a density because with a positive density, uh, n plus 1 to the c and n plus 2 to the c uh, are not co-prime. They can be even, both of them, with a positive density. Yes. We'll see. We'll see how it goes when uh, when we have better tools for working on uh, on that. For the time being, I just want to do it with bare hands. That is to say that what we use is a uh, tailor. Nothing. Nothing else. So now I try to organize the board. It's fine, I can erase all that. Too late, by the way, to raise the question. OK. Thank you. Thank you for the approval. <laughs> um, OK, so I, uh, there is first something I would like to, uh, to do. So OK, so now uh, three. OK, proof of. Uh, theorem 2, weak form, of a weak form. Of theorem 2. OK? Weak form of theorem 2, that is to say that C belongs in 1, 2. And we don't and H is fixed. Just in the proof, we'll see how it's possible to increase H with N. But uh, essentially, for the time being, H is fixed. And I want to say that there are infinitely many N, so that N plus 1 to the N, blah, 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 N plus H to the to, to the C, sorry, uh, integral part are pairwise co uh, even. Uh, even, all even. Okay. Good. So what we want to say is we have to look at what is n plus h to the C, and we then we take the the integral part. So this is something that you can write as n to the C plus C h times uh, n plus 1, n plus n to the c minus 1, oh, uh, there's a mistake here, but this is not a problem, plus big O of x square n to the c minus 2. OK? This is just Taylor expansion. And you see that if h is fixed and n tends to 0, this is just peanut. Okay, this is a little of one. So H is fixed. You see here that a priori it is even possible, so C minus 2 is negative. So a priori here it is possible to have H going up to a little power of n. But with what uh, the, the way we are doing that, it will not be that, that well. But in any case, for the time being, this is something. I completely take it out. OK. Then I say the following, that this number, I can write it at 2. I, I multiply by 2, and I divide everything by 2. 
Now, n to the c over 2, I can write it as being n over uh, n c over 2 plus 2 times fractional part of n c over 2. This is just to say that n c is the sum of the integral part and the fractional part, except that I have divided everything by 2. I take 2 times, this is 2 times n over c to the 2, and this one I said this is the sum of the integral part and the fractional part. Okay? And then I have something which will be again plus 2h integral part of c n c minus 1 over 2 plus 2h uh, fractional part of c n c minus 1 over 2 plus p naught. The peanut is exactly the same as here. Okay? Now, what I want is to say that this number is even. If it turns out that this is the integral part, then I'm happy because this is the sum of two even numbers. Okay? So if the sum here is small, then I am done. Okay? So I want this to be small. One way to say that this is small is just to say, for example, that assume that n over c to the 2 is less than 1 third or something like that. I uh, 2, uh, let us say 6 then this will be less than one third. If I assume this, aha, there is the factor h. So this one has to be pretty small. So what I ask also is that c n to the c minus 1 divided by 2 is less than 1 over, what I, I, with equality or not, this is not the problem, 6 times h then integral part of n plus h to the c is even for all h. You can start with h is equal to 0. This is not a problem. I start with 1. I, it has no importance to start with 1 or not. Just to say that if I start with 1, then I have exactly h terms. But uh, it's, not, uh, it's not important. Okay, so if this is small and this is very small, then I am happy for any h. This will be the int the integral part of that will be an will be even. The integral part of that is this number plus this number, and this is really a fractional part because it is less than one. Okay, and you leave even some margin because this will tell you, you multiply by 2, it is one third. You multiply by 2h, this is again one third. And this is, of course, inside the remaining one third. This is nothing. OK? So in some way, this number, the fact that you have a 2, that you have a 2 here, or that you have a constant, or c times 2, this is not really a problem. If you know how to do for nc times something is less than a constant and nc times something is less than a something quite small, both at the same time, then you are happy. Okay? Well, I will take maybe different values than those, but this is what I want to say. So now I erase everything. So you have to see, is it okay? We know that n to the c is small fractional part, and cn to the c minus 1 is even smaller. And uh, then I am happy. It tells me exactly what I want here. Okay? So if you see here that if you can say something which is pretty small, like a power of n, then you're happy and you are winning. This is why you get the n to the, the, n to the kappa. But with what we are doing, it will not be that easy. Yes, yes. Like if you go, like for example, suppose c is bigger than 2, and if I do so, if I go to the next term, I mean, and follow the thing, does it get complicated? Like, 
uh, sorry like if you take n so sorry. n plus i to the power c where c is uh, bigger than 2 like yes between 2 to 3 yeah then you go one suppose you go to one more step yes so uh, uh, is, is that i mean like is that too complicated or I mean no no, you see, if you look at the statement of theorem, uh, which one is it? Where, where, where it is? Uh, okay, is for all C. Okay. C is for all C. The, the, the fact that becomes more difficult is to say when they are co-prime. But when they are even, there is no problem. You can take any C. Simply for this proof, I want to have a proof which is in some way somewhat easier for the theorem when it is even. And then to copy it, just to improve slightly on it to get the co-prime case okay so but this this is you are right yeah. for 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 divisible by two there is no problem you you can go to the next ones as much as you wish yeah absolutely you can you can go on with Taylor yeah uh, th this is why there might be ID for a possibility for going uh, further for the coprimality but you'll see that there are some other tricks in the, into that so if you are happy with that, I erase everything. OK? So what I want to prove now is some, OK, I see what it is. So I erase everything. You see, I want to have only one board because I want to recycle it. Mm -hmm. This kind of gives you positive density. Yes, density, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, this, this is fine. If you you can prove that you have positive density for those, there is no problem. You have positive density. Yes. And you see that the, the density will drop when h is tending to infinity. But for given h, you have a, a positive density which is something like one over h. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so I go now to the, to the proof of, uh, of the statement, which, uh, which is it that I want n0. So what I'm going to, to try to prove is not exactly the one I had, but this will be useful for me later on, is to find nc is at most one third, and uh, cnc minus 1 is less than uh, 1 over three H. You see it's about the, the, the same type of thing. Except that there is no divisor two here, which would be a bit of a mess. But if you know how to do that, you know how to do when you divide by two. This is not a problem. So uh, okay, let us uh, let us start. So what we want to do, you said there are infinitely many, so you want to prove that between capital N and 2 capital N, there is 1 if N is large enough. Okay? So for the time being, you introduce N is large enough. N large integer. Of course, this is not a mathematical definition, but what I say that N is an integer, and what I am going to say that if N is large enough, then it is true. Okay? So this is the way we, we think of it. And uh, what, do, what do I need? Maybe I need also to use somewhere the mean value theorem. Mean value theorem, which will tell you the following, that uh, there exist k1 and k2, such that for all L belonging in uh, 0m, and given and so on, we have the following that cm uh, plus l to the c minus 1 is between minus cm to the c minus 1 is larger than k1 l m to the c minus 2 and less than k2 l m c minus 2. This is just really the mean value theorem. You know what is the derivative of this function. So you are taking L times the derivative of this function. And this function is C, C minus 1, M to the C minus 2. 
forget about the cc minus 1 and uh, the fact that you have some coefficient in there, and this will be just what you need. So this is what you, what you have. And now we start the proof. Uh, try to like that. So now, since n is sufficiently large, we have c times uh, 2n to the c minus 1. minus c times uh, n to the c minus 1. This is larger than n to the c minus 1, of course. OK? And so there exists m in uh, c minus 1, c n to the c minus 1, uh, 2 times, no, not 2 times, c times. 2n to the c minus 1. Closed open, this is not a problem. OK, because you have something which is large enough. As, to, as soon as it is larger than 2, you are happy. In this interval, there exists one integer. OK. So you let m be the smallest integer such that integral part of cm to the c minus 1 is equal to m. Because it is in this interval, so there exists some m in this interval between n, uh, between capital N and 2 capital N, such that this number is equal to m. You have an integer m in this interval, and so there exists some m for which this is true. OK? Now, the point is that once you know that this is the smallest integer, little m, then fractional part of this has to be small. If the fractional part of that is too large, then by the mean value theorem, there will be m minus 1 will also satisfy this. OK? So by the mean value theorem, we have cm to the c minus 1 is less than k2 m to the c minus 2, simply because if cm to the c minus 1 is larger, then if you take m minus 1, then m minus 1 would have also the property to be inside this interval, and that cm to the c minus 1 is equal to m. OK? Otherwise, m is not minimum. This is the minimal property we took. So since we take the minimal, we know that its fractional part is very small. And now, what you can do is that you go step by step. And what is interesting is that this, you see this sequence, cm to the c minus 1, will increase by very little steps. So what you can do is, however, find a value, not to change the value of cm to the c minus 1, but arrive at a value of this which is not completely negligible. So what you have is that now, huh? so now what you have also is that this, if m is um, is large enough, if capital N is large enough, this is not too large, and this is less than 1 over 20H or whatever you wish. Okay? So this is also less than 1 over 20H, let us say, if N large enough. So this is a small thing. 
And now what we are going to do is to go step by step. We increase this by L steps. So now what you have is that there exists L, indeed at most m to the 2 minus c divided by k for hk1, such that, you will understand why this value, such that c m to the c m plus l to the c minus 1 is equal to m. You don't change it, because if you, if you increase it by this amount, because of the prime of this number, you don't increase it too much. So this will be still small. This will be still m. You don't increase it by, uh, by m, because this is small enough. But now, if you look at um, cn, what is interesting is that cm plus l to the c minus 1 fractional part is large enough. Because each time you are increasing it by this little amount, you are increasing it by at least k1 lm c minus 2. So you can increase it, and this will be, let us say, in 1 over 5 h, the, the constant have no importance, 1 over 4 h. So what we have been doing up to now, you see, y y you should understand maybe what is the function m to the c minus 1. m to the c minus 1 is something like square root, if you take c, which is 3 half. And so it is a function which is just going like that very slowly. So when you have two consecutive elements, you have something which is rather large. If it is square root, this is the square root of n that you have here. So you can get something which goes by steps, but which is now something that close to one half, or when, uh, whatever you wish. But but this will be still. You you don't you don't jump from one value to the other. This is very small, so you can get this rather small. But uh, always the same integral value. It goes just by little steps. Good. Now, this value starts to be of interest for us. I call it n0. This is my n0. So we forget about that if we agree that there exists some n0 for which we have this Cn is equal to m. And essentially, what is of interest for us is that Cn0 to the C minus 1 is something of the order 1 over h. Then what can I can do with that? Then, now I look at, uh, it's maybe time. You see, we have been playing with uh, C minus 1. It's maybe time to go to n to the c, because we're interested not only to have something like that, but also to say something about n to the c. Okay, So we want to know what is n to the c. So what we are going to look at is to look at n0 plus k to the c. n0 plus k to the c. Let us assume that maybe I start with 4k for 0 less than k less than whatever you wish, 20h, something like that. We have, and now we follow what is n0 plus k to the c. So of course, this is n0 to the c plus fractional part of n0 to the c. Up to now, I have absolutely no idea. Well, I am interested only in, uh, in fractional parts. I'm interested in the fractional part of this. I'm not interested in the, uh, well, I know that n will be something around n. So I know that is, uh, I am not interested in this value. I'm interested in this value. So plus k times c 
C and Z. Uh, I look at the, the Taylor expansion. I have already looked, uh, r r written, I've written it down already. This is N0 plus C, K, N0 plus K to the C minus 1. So it is C, N0 to the C minus 1 plus K times C N0 to the C minus 1 plus something which is a big O of K square N0 to the C minus 2. Again, N0, I know what it is. It is something about N. And uh, so if K is fixed, at most 20H, this will be peanut. And for the time being, I can go rather far with, uh, with K to still have something which is peanut here. OK. So now K is not very large. So if K is not very, uh, sorry, I'm, uh, write something. yes, this is fine. Yeah. Yeah, this is okay. C and zero. Yeah, okay, this is fine. Okay. Uh, what I'm saying now. What I'm saying is that K is not very large, and so I know what is this fractional part of C and zero to the C C and Yeah, there's something I know, tuk, 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 that I have, I have to take care of C, N, C minus 1. This will be rather small, because this is in 1, one over 5H, 1 over 4H. And when I add something times K, which is up to If you allow it to probably, probably 3H or something like that, it's OK. Because three, I mean, because you are. No, no, but this is. Four, no, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. The, the, this is not a problem. But I, it does not decrease by one. It decreases by one times m to the c minus two. Yeah. This is very small. Even if it is twenty h, it can be much larger than that, because each time I am increasing on the c minus one, I am just decreasing by. The number of terms that is to say at most 20h k2 times m to the c minus 2. But m to the c minus 2 is peanut. No, no, I mean the fourth term. How do you do the fourth term? Is small? Ah, no, yes. No, no, I don't want the fourth term to be small. This is the key point. Okay. What I am saying is that what I can say here is that I have c n0 plus k times c minus 1, this is uh, less than 1 over 3h. This one is not a problem. No. Because this one, I am just taking k times, which is at most h times something, m to the c minus 2. Yes. And m minus 2 is not a problem. Yeah. So the real problem is here. Yeah. And this is something which is really important. And I want it to be important, because I have no knowledge of what is n0 to the c. n0 to the c can be 2 third. Okay. But if it is 2 third, I am not happy. But since this is now not too small, it is at least 1 over 5h, then I can increase it. And then I will go round and have something which will turn, which will go above 1. But I don't care that it goes above 1. What is important is that it stays in the uh, interval 1 third. Okay? Yes. And so if I take k in this range, then I am sure that each time I'm going to increase by at, most w at least one, uh, 1 over 5h, so I will go far enough. And since this, this is rather small, however, I am sure that I will fall into one third. What I am doing is the following, you see. I am here. 
N0, I don't know where is N0 to the C. It's somewhere which is here. Possibly not one third. I would like one third to, to have it in this range. But what I am saying is that when I am increasing, now I have chosen N0 so that the difference is between 1 over 5H and 1 over 4H. So it is 1 over uh, And then at least I can find one value which is inside this interval. OK? So now I am done. Good. I keep this. This is what I wanted to do. OK. Uh, yes, possibly. I need now. Sorry. You are finding an n zero. So, so yes. So I have, so uh, I have some n zero plus k, which is good. I can find a k uh, if I, I I can find a good k for which this will be good, but for which this also the fractional part now will be this. The integral part will not be the same one. It will increase by one, but it's not a problem. If this is already in one third, I am happy. I stop. If it is not in one third, I have all the possibility to play with k to increase it until I, it falls modulo 1 into 1. So the integral part will be this plus this plus 1. But I am not interested in the value of the integral part. I'm just interested in the value of the fractional part. So I can go above 1 if needed. If it is not small enough, this goes sufficiently quickly so that I can do it. Yes, because you see, this is, I don't know where is this one. But I know that when k o increases, not first of all, I can cover all the circle, but I increase only by small steps. So sometime I will fall into one third, into zero one third. <coughs> so this is for the theorem that it is uh, even. I mean, it is uh, nc over 2, and this over 2, and it is 6h. But uh, the, the, this is not a problem. You understand that uh, you can do exactly the same thing for different constant. Those constant will be of interest for me. <coughs> so this is done for this. Now you look at coprimality. Yeah. But uh, have you not proved something stronger that you actually have all these numbers with an arithmetic progression with a common difference which is even? Uh, it, is, it is increasing too quickly. Yeah. Uh, locally, locally it should be linear, yes. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, locally it is linear. Yeah. Yeah, locally it's linear. Yeah. At this stage yeah. you are yeah. proving... Yeah, you can, you can even prove that it is an arithmetic progression, arithmetic if you wish. Yeah. 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 Uh, this. yeah, I think, yeah. OK, so let us go to our business now. Proposition. So now we are going to uh, the next uh, The next thing is uh, the, the proof of, uh, of the other theorem, the proof of the theorem with a good number, which is the one with coprimality. OK, so you fill the gaps. What is it? This is 4. And this is the one with coprimality. Coprimality was uh, the one with theorem 1. OK? So proposition, let n be large enough satisfying So first, you have the following. Nc is at most one third. C and C minus 1 is at most 1 over 3h. H is given. Then you have the following. I introduce pH is the product 
of the prime up to h this is pH so for us if h is fixed this is a fixed number can be rather large but you see that if you want to go to something which is n capital N it will be something like that then the product of prime up to h is something which is exponential of h the prime number theorem it is equivalent to, to e to the h so if you want to have something which is not exactly a power a small power of n then you have to take a small log of n this is exactly where comes the upper bound in uh, in uh, log n for h because we want this number not to be too large compared to n to be a small power of n okay so ph for the time being is a constant so we assume that ph divides uh, cn to the c minus 1 and uh, GCD of NC CNC minus 1 is 1 so these are the hypotheses then n plus 1 to the C you can start by n to the C if you like it blah 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 n plus h to the c uh, all these elements are co-prime are uh, pairwise co-prime so okay let us prove that Okay, then because of this, you, you know, we, we start to be used to that, and we know that n plus h to the c is n to the c plus h times fractional part of um, c n plus h. Know what I'm saying here? H time c n to the c minus 1. is what we have this we are used now to that we have done that several times you have the fractional part here which is at most one third you have here the fractional part of the business which is at most one over three h you multiply by h it is at most one third and one third plus one third is less than one and so this is really the fractional part of this business so now we we have this okay So first point, this number for any h, I'm sorry, I just use, I don't want to spoil this. Uh, I'm going to recycle this. So uh, n plus h to the c with our hypothesis has no prime factor which is less than h. Uh, so why it is true if you have a prime factor which is less than h so it divides uh, pH but you know that pH divide this number so uh, it divide this one and since it divide this one and it divide this one it has to divide this one but then it means that those two are not comprime and this is not possible so we did that it's okay good second so it's not even to say that they are co-prime the little prime less than h do not occur into the business we did what we want for that and for doing that we just introduce something which is a mild condition because this is a fixed number uh, before tending to infinity this is a fixed number so we're asking this this and something like that that this is congruent to to zero but this shouldn't be that complicated we'll see 
how we are going to do with that because this is still we have something some condition that those elements are co-prime okay so now what we want to say is that we assume this and we want to show that this so okay let p then of course which has to be larger than h which which divides which divides which divides uh, both n plus h and n plus k okay we assume that they are not co-prime and we want to, to show that there is some contradiction okay so this is they divide both of them so they divide the difference P divides the difference, and the difference is H minus K, C and C minus 1. I go, I go too quickly for the, for the first. No, it's OK. The first is OK. There is no small prime. So now I say, if there is someone which divides two of them, it has to be a large one, because known is divisible by a small one. Then it divides the difference. So we divide this. But this is a number which is less than h. So p does not divide this number. So p divides this number. But then p divides this number and p divides this number, and again there is a contradiction. OK? Yeah. Slowly? Yeah. Slowly. p divides h minus k. P does not divide this because this is less than and so on. So P divides C and C minus 1. Yeah, that's true. But then it is n plus h, not n to the power of C. We're between n to the power But of for, th for the time being, yeah, OK. But then I said that P was dividing both of them. So at least it divides 1. Okay. So it divides this and this. Yes. OK. But if it divides this and this, it divides this and this. It means that it divides this, and those are co-prime. Okay, and this is clearly this is the place where we are in more or less stuck for doing something which is better than uh, c equal to, that c up to two. This is the real difficulty here. Because then in this expansion you have more than two terms. You have two terms because C is less than 2. I don't say that it doesn't exist. I simply say we don't know how to do. So this is definitely an important part where we need C to be small. If we know how to do it with C larger, then of course we can do something better than, uh, than using uh, bare hands, you see, in, the, in this part. So now, what I want to do is to prove that there is something like that. OK? So let us go back to this. So we start by saying there is an integer m in this interval. But this interval is rather large. It is something, it was something like x and a constant time x. So you may assume that this is divisible by pH. This will not be a difficulty. Okay, pH is a constant. We can assume that this number is divisible. You remember that this, this was going to be constant all the time. In all our construction, Cm, C minus 1 has always the same value. So if we want it to be divisible by pH, you say there exists an integer m, so that this is m times pH. This is fine. Okay, Just n has to be a bit larger, but uh, you don't care about that. So this is possible, so there exists m, so that m pH is in this interval. OK, so in some way, if you go on to the bottom, this is fine. Asking this, this is just 
not important condition. We'll see another way to, 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 to write it. I will tell you then how we can do that also. So OK, this is fine. This is not a problem. But now the, the problem will be to say that something has to be co-prime with, uh, with NC. By the way, telling that I am now, yes, we'll see how we do, we do for this business. So you see, to be co-prime with something is difficult. Because even if you, you know that uh, if you have some, some num uh, how can you say that you are co-prime with something? In some way, the set of elements which are co-prime with M are usually a, b a bad situation. You see, what we, what we are doing is here to play with increasing the element. And we want to find an element which will be co-prime with that. And this is difficult, except in one case. To be sure that you are co-prime with someone is not difficult if you take a prime number. If you have a prime number, then you are happy because take two consecutive elements. One of them is co-prime with, uh, with Q, so you are very happy with that. But you see, this is very large. So by uh, Bertrand theorem or whatever you wish, so uh, the prime number theorem, there is no problem. You may assume that this is a prime number. There exists a prime Q, so that QPH is there. Okay, Q is a prime number. Okay, so CM C minus one is this, and blah blah blah, and you have uh, almost everything that goes on. So CM C minus one it will not be M; it is always the same value, so it will be QPH. OK? Now, K, okay, we can take, we have some margin for K. We said 20H, but you remember there was, there was something, now well, I don't have it any longer, it was something moving by C M to the C minus 2. So you have really a lot, uh, a lot of room for that. So you can do it and to say, OK, I go up to 20 times. HPH. This is not a problem. This will tell you that here there is again this upper bound that uh, pH has to be a small power of n. So a small power of n, and this is why you have some restriction that H has to be at most log, log n. Log n. So, okay. So all that is fine. Everything is the same thing. And this is QH. I think this is the only thing I have to do. And now, again, I have to work on that. So I'm here. So this will be OK. This is not an important point because k is at most something like pH, and so this is not a problem. OK. So now I know that this is q. Cn0 is qPH, so it is a multiple of q. This is fine. And you see what we were saying? We were saying that I want n0 to the c to be less than one third. OK, fine. And I want also this integral part of c, uh, cn to the c minus 1 divisible by pH. This is already done. But what I want is that n0 c is not divisible. Uh, I mean, fractional part of n0 to the Yes, n0 to the c to be, or for some k, to be co-prime with this. Okay, This will be the same. But now what I can do is, when I was saying I am increasing this, 
I am increasing this enough so that it becomes two consecutive multiple of pH. And I have room for that. So I have room because what I am doing now is that I am turning enough time I can turn something which is at least to find two, two multiple of pH. And then when I go av above, at some point, the element I will have is the, the, the what I will get here is something which is um, congruent to one mod pH. I mean, no, I have two consecutive values of pH. If I let k turn around among those numbers, so for all those numbers, the n cn0 or cn0 plus k will be always something which is pH, q pH. This will not change because they change very slowly. But then as we got the integral part of this, which is this, plus this, this one will turn enough times so that it becomes at least two consecutive values mod q. And if you have two consecutive values mod q, then you are happy. It is one of them. So in this sum, one of them will be co-prime with q. Okay, And so you are done also with that. Good. So, uh, well, so I planned less than, uh, than what, I, what I was thinking of. But uh, is it a problem? Yeah, maybe, maybe I can tell you just something about the way usually to get this question of uh, coprimality. Because I am, I am not going to, 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 to go back into the, the question of coprimality, so I started with that, S just some complement. So this is something that can be useful if you, if you want to do that, because this seems to be some very special trick. And uh, I doubt you can use that. We definitely, C less than 2 is very hopeful, and we're using several times in some way. Um, so if you want to say, for example, that n and n to the C are co-prime, what you are going to say? So five, I don't know, or something like that, complement. How we tackle the set of n, when you, how to consider the set of n to x, such that uh, GCD of n and n to the c is equal to 1. So what you are doing is you are taking n up to x, and then you are saying that I have the summation. I have, I have something which will be how you say that the GCD of something is 1. A good way to check that something is 1 is to look at the divisor of the GCD of n and to the c of mu of d. Because when you when you count, this is a good way to count the number of elements. Something is one if the sum of the di it's the divisor, the mu function over its divisors is e is equal to one, and otherwise it is zero. Okay, it just uh, it just comes from the fact that one minus one to the power r is equal to one if r is equal to zero, and otherwise it's equal to zero if r is larger than one. This is the the key point in the proof. OK, so now you are happy. You have two sums, and so you change the sums. And so what you are saying is that uh, then you have the sum of mu of d. You are summing over d. And since d divides n, and n is at most x, the, you are sure that n is at most x. I'm thinking of c to be large. And, uh, and then you have something which will be now. You are summing the number of n up to x so that n 
is congruent to 0 mod d. And m to the c is congruent to 0 mod d. This is to say that d divides at the same time n and n to the c of 1. Okay, And then you are happy because if you have something like that, this is quite easy to, you know what it is. This is the summation uh, when d divides x of mu of d. And then you have something which is the summation. So you say immediately that n is divisible by d. d is already given. You know what it is. So there is no point to say that n is divisible by d. You just say that n is at most n of, uh, x over d. And then you say that n is m times d. And so you just have to say something that n times d to the c is, congru is congruent to 0 mod d of 1. Okay? And this is something you can, you can figure out what it is. So you can also take the small, uh, the small d's. For the small d's, you have really a good, uh, good distribution of those elements. We'll talk about that in the fifth, uh, the, the day after tomorrow. We'll talk about those things, how you, you, you count the element like that. But, but this is something you, you can do, which is much better than having two conditions. You see, if you have here some other value n to the d, then you have to say that both are. And uh, so here you, you have something which is much nicer. So for small d, you have a very good uh, uh, estimation with a good error term. And for large d, then uh, it is enough. Then if you have large d, you have a good denominator here. This is not great. You see, you are expecting to have something in x. But if d is large, then you are counting on a very short number of, uh, of numbers. Okay? And so then, if it is really very large, you just completely forget about that. And otherwise, you can get some good upper bound, and you are happy with that. Okay? This is the, the way it goes. So this is why, in some way, each time you have something which is n, and uh, it helps you a lot. Because then it means that you have a sum of a something which is small for large d. Small d, you always can master them. But large d, you don't know what to do with them. So OK, maybe I stop here. Yes. Yeah, this is why in some way, you see, the, the, the question to, to put it in, um, uh, in the frame of uh, Hardy as uh, Bergelson uh, and uh, Richter did, it's, it's very nice because then you are going to say, aha, you know it, but uh, I want to know how is it possible to do n2 plus n to, to some power k and to power, I don't know, n2 power c or something like that. Yeah, OK. Then you say, but this is, this is a hard, in a Hardy field. and. Uh, this, this is why it makes it, you, you cover all the, all the field like that. Instead of curving step by step, can I put a, yes, you can put a, I mean, you can put, no, but uh, be careful. The, here, the, the fact that they are co prime is really, you don't have to go above the, the power two. So uh, if you start with something which is square, then better you take a C which is smaller than one. You can look at that also. So why is people considering a C bigger than one already? Sorry? Why is people considering C bigger than one? Oh, for C usually less than one, you have something. You know how, how we were happy with uh, with considering those parts? They are very nice. So uh, essentially, they take all the values, and they take the values in larger and larger intervals. So. It's not to make it, it's not that, it's indeed because it is simpler if it is less than 1. And for this result, it's for all uh, C? Or for Sorry? Bank Sparlinsky result, is it also for all uh, C or what? It is no, there is no, Bank Sparlinsky, there is no power. It is multiple. Oh, 
Okay, so then alpha ones, uh, what are they? They're irrational. Okay. If they, are, if they, they have to be uh, yeah. together irrational because other, uh, yeah, yeah, be yeah, because otherwise uh, you, you have something which is between n and the uh, fractional part of uh, n over two. You have uh, you have something which is uh, they are consistent. Yes. In general position. Hmm? They should be in the general position. That's yeah, yeah. In some way they are so in general really position. Really, really dependent. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So in your final remark to the summation, uh, here also you would like to take C between one and two, some smaller C, or is no, no, no. What we have, no, because because we 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 are just indeed what we can do okay. is show that you see there will be something here. You have to understand that here you have something which is already one over D. Yeah. That occurs. So you have mu D over D. As soon as you have something which is a little power here, you have something which is convergent. And so what is important is just the very small power, the very small x, very small d. As soon as you have some d, which is something which is large, it will give you something which is mu of d over d to the 1 plus something. And this converges. And so you are just interested in small d. So this is why you can take c arbitrary large here. 